are here with Bryce Lewis at Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, and he's going to show us what's up on the deadlift here. Bryce recently did a 722-pound deadlift in the USAPL, so tell us about some deadlift in here, buddy. Yeah, so today we're just going to talk about uh, a few different things associated with deadlift. Uh, number one, as far as positioning goes, uh, we want to take a look at the athlete and their leverages as far as stance selection between the two dominant styles of squatting, the sumo and the conventional deadlift. Um, we like to take a look from the side at uh, back angle uh, as one of the main indicators of what stance they should select. So go down, grab the bar. Now having seen Mike pull before, Mike's good for both stances. His back angle is pretty similar um, between both the stances. So if we can take a look from the side, that's somewhere around 30 degrees. Now if you can stand up, take your sumo stance, go down, grab the bar. Sumo stance, hands are on the inside, feet are on the outside. As he goes down, we get a few extra degrees of uh, verticality in the back. That's good. So what we're looking for generally is a position that allows your back to be uh, as upright as possible, given the constraints that we want to be, uh, have the slack removed from the system and make sure that the hips are high enough to initiate the squat. So obviously, if I get down and just grab the bar and kind of use it to yank myself into it, I can get myself into a really vertical position, but this isn't where I'm going to begin my pull. So this is where we start to take a look at some of the other constraints. We want the shoulders out in front of the bar if we're looking um, from sorry, the side. Sorry, can you show us uh, where you would end up if you didn't use the bar as leverage? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> hope someone's ready to catch me because if I, if I just start here with my shins perfectly vertical and I'm pulling myself into the bar, well, sure, I can keep a straighter back, but as soon as I let go of the bar, I'm falling backwards. Right. So, you know, some people actually pull with that style because they have massively dominant quads like right. Nisha, who we just saw. But you're also utilizing the bar to kind of pull yourself down into position. And I noticed uh, today when you were pulling heavy, you had your shoulders nice and high. Yeah, exactly. So we'll talk a little about the shoulders too. This is one of the other cues that we're focusing on is that as we get ready to pull, we want shoulders out in front of the bar. So we don't want to have shoulders directly over. We want shoulders to be in front of the bar. If we were to look at a vertical line straight through the bar as we're coming up, shoulders out. And then as we initiate the pull, we want to tighten the shoulders by bracing. So instead of having shoulders completely relax, we get a lot of added tightness in the back and initiate the pull by tightening the shoulders in. It looks like you're um, kind of pulling your elbows down and in. That's right, exactly. So elbows will initiate a move in the shoulder as far as tightness goes. So if you want to focus on the elbows and bringing them in close to the body and pointing them back a little bit further, that's one way of winding up the shoulder and getting more tightness you're taking, in the... You're taking this and kind of screwing it in a little bit. That's exactly right. So we go from a, a relaxed position to a loaded position as we get ready to pull. Let's Have you... To a bench. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's a cue Have for the bench Have you found press. any movements that kind of help you to learn that? Because that looks like a, a skill. It is. Um, and we can use some banded pull-aparts to okay. help with a movement like that. Um, or we can have a, a hand on the wall right. and think about rotating the elbow in and underneath. So we place the palm face up and think about turning the elbow. And you can feel that shoulder start to tighten up. Yeah, that's interesting watching you do it now. Your shoulder drops. Yep. And that's exactly what's happening when you're doing conventional pulls today. You're like part of your shoulder was dropping, but then coming through and coming up nice and high. Yeah. Yeah. So it ends up uh, being a more optimal pull. Next thing is that a lot of athletes tend to start with their hips too low. So we actually like to see the hips up a little bit higher um, as a position to remove the slack. So if I can get Mike here, hop up again. Example of too low? Yeah, too low. So there we go. Um, if he started the pull from here, what would probably happen if the weight was heavy enough was that he would correct to the position that his body is naturally most efficient with, his hips being up a little bit higher. So we like athletes to actually start in that position rather than starting too low, passing through it, and then beginning the pull. So, right, so kind of removing some of those inefficiencies at the start of the pull. So in very basic terms, if your body's going to move towards that positioning um, before the barbell leaves the floor, then just start from that positioning just and start you'll there. be in a little bit more optimal position to get the barbell moving. Yep, that's exactly right. Let's see what else we have as far as cues go. Um, with the, uh, you kind of talked about, have Jesse come up here, have a taller athlete. Jesse's six foot seven. <laughs> <laughs> According to Julia Starrett. Um, Jesse's about six one, six two, somewhere yeah. in that neighborhood. Um, so you mentioned, uh, you know, kind of starting with the shoulders in line slash maybe slightly over the barbell. Yeah. Um, what is the reasoning behind that? Why are we doing that? So that tends to be the position where we can keep a straight bar path with the deadlift. Um, if we start with the shoulders directly over the bar, what happens a lot of times is that first we have the athlete again correct to that position where they're actually pitched over so they can keep the bar path uh, directly vertical. Um, 
so it's another case of, do we want to start with a position that feels optimal, or do we want to start with where you should begin the pull from? I got you. And then if, you're, if your shoulders are back too far behind the bar from the beginning, it's probably just kind of similar thing. You're going to end up kind of getting forward and ending up in a similar position to where you're kind of mentioning you should start from. Yeah, that's exactly right. And you can get away with a pull where your shoulders are directly in line with the bar, but you end up with massive amounts of quad emphasis, especially if you're a sumo right. lifter, um, and really underutilizing the posterior chain. So if we get the shoulders out a little bit, we get more even leg drive as you complete the lift. Gotcha. Let's have you line up for a sumo pull. Jesse likes to pull a little bit wider. Yep. Um, and so the general things that you're looking for with Mike versus him are the same thing. We're still looking for the back to be kind of flat and trying to pull the shoulder blades up a little bit, correct? Exactly. So Jesse's winding up that shoulder down instead of back to uh, give himself the shortest bar path possible, making sure that the shoulders are down so that he has to finish the bar here instead of here up and even further back. So even though you might sacrifice a little bit of upper back tightness, you end up making up for it and more by reducing the range of motion of the bar. Uh, the last thing we want to talk about is patience off the floor, especially when we're talking about sumo deadlift. Um, the speed off the floor is going to be slow as a result of biomechanics. Um, you just have to be okay with slow bar speed and kind of work your way through it as you get closer to the top. So if athletes are up at 80%, 90%, 100%, you have to be okay with working a little bit before that bar starts moving and it'll get easier toward the completion of the lift. And then with the uh, conventional, pull, you might have a little bit more speed off the floor. Yeah, that's exactly right. So athletes tend to be a little bit faster off the floor. Um, sometimes because of the round in the upper back, you're able to get a little bit more jerk off the bar. Right. Um, but I've had conventional athletes too that are slower off the floor, um, especially longer femur athletes uh, that end up more forward lean in their upper torso. So it's just a case of feeling comfortable with slow bar speeds. And we can say the same thing for squats too. I've seen a lot of athletes, you know, starting to pull some big weights. Uh, they're even just kind of, you know, almost literally closing their eyes and just freaking yanking on the bar. What are some of your thoughts on some of the things we see going on now with powerlifting and some of those yank deadlifts? I see, you know, a variation of athletes. Some people doing it repeatedly. Dan Green comes to mind as someone who's done it successfully right. and not injured himself. But generally, I think it's a recipe to get injured in a relatively short period of time. Right. Um, it's happened to me before where I've tweaked something in my low back and you know, kind of gotten lucky and realized, hey, this is a warning sign. I shouldn't be doing this. Right. So it's just a case of let's be a little bit more controlled here. Let's treat it as a technical sport and not throw all of our rage into the deadlift all at once <laughs> and, and end up with uh, herniated discs. Any more cues here for the deadlift? That's it. So we talked about shoulders over the bar. We talked about uh, morphology of an athlete as far as leverages go with the femurs and uh, the height of the torso dictating maybe what stance you should take between conventional and sumo. Uh, we talked about winding up the shoulder. We talked about being patient off the floor. Um, I think that was it. Um, when you're talking about patience off the floor, um, are you kind of, I know you, you kind of mentioned with the sumo pull, it might take longer to actually do the pull, but are you also talking about before you actually initiate the pull, like waiting until you're in position and then kind of going? Well, that's something too. I mean, a totally different point, but uh, we want to be aware that uh, this is a technical lift. So, right. um, I generally don't like to see personally athletes that uh, run up to the bar, quickly grab the bar and then initiate the pull because um, that's not repeatable. You know, at the same time, I don't like to see athletes roll the bar and then initiate the pull because it's not repeatable. So we want something repeatable every time for all three lifts. And that means creating a ritual and being a little bit more methodical about how you set up and how you execute. Awesome. That's a bunch of tips on the deadlift from Bryce Lewis from Super Training Gym. Later. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs>